Happy New Year and welcome to the first web design video blog of 2013. This week we're going to show you how to work with high resolution CSS background images for retina or high DPI displays. This is something we believe will really trend and start to become standard practice in 2013, particularly as last year we saw the release of several new high DPI devices like the MacBook Pros, iPads and Kindles. As you probably know, retina screens typically have four pixels where you'd expect to see just one. This means that regular 72 DPI raster graphics are doubled in size, look blurry and out of place. Typography, CSS3, SVGs and icon fonts are paving the way for fast loading, crisp HD design. However, best practice for working with embedded images is still an evolving practice. Despite this, some great plugins have begun to emerge like Retina, .js and WP Retina times 2 which dynamically serve high resolution images with those high DPI screens. The great news however is that working with background images like sprites are much easier to work with. CSS3 brought us media queries which have become the building blocks of responsive web design. In the same way that media queries can detect a viewport size, we can also use them to detect high DPI resolutions. Let's take a look. Okay, so here's a simple page that I've uh, created and I'm just viewing it currently on my uh, MacBook Pro with a retina screen. Now I've just made a simple single div and I've set this uh, graphic of Nick and I as the div's background through CSS. We're currently viewing the picture which is a regular 72 DPI image at its native size which is uh, 400 pixels in width. Uh, but you probably can't see from the uh, video compression that this file actually looks a little bit blurry um, as it's only being shown um, at sort of half the resolution that the screen is capable of viewing images at. So if you look at the files, here's the uh, regular size image that we're currently looking at just now. And in order to create a, res uh, a high resolution retina fallback, I've made a second version of the image that's at double the resolution. So rather than being 400 pixels wide, it's actually 800. You also notice that I've appended the uh, file name with Apple's prescribed high resolution modifier. That's putting the at two times at the end of the file name. And if we head over then to our style sheet, we can look at and enable the media query. So this is the regular CSS you'll see here just at the top of my simple page. There's our div with the uh, class logo and we're just setting a background size uh, sorry, a background image as per normal, and that's our regular 72 DPI image. Next in comes the media query, and you'll see that I've uh, got a lot of uh, sort of fallback compatibility versions, but they all pretty much do the same thing. The ones with the twos are selecting Retina devices like the iPhone 4, iPads, and the MacBook Pro like mine. But there are some uh, devices like uh, Android smartphones that actually have a uh, sort of semi high resolution uh, screen. It's actually a 1.5 pixel ratio, so it's sort of in between regular resolution and the really sort of impressive uh, retina screens that Apple does. So, if you wish just to talk, uh, just to cater for the Apple devices, you only need the lines that have the two in. If you want to serve high resolution images to all uh, resolutions above standard, then you can have all of the uh, eight that I've included here that are available to copy and paste from the sporting blog post. So, there's our media query, and within we can start to. Uh, add some conditional CSS if a retina screen is detected. So for normal users they'll just get the regular CSS that we've declared to load the regular size image. However if the screen resolution is detected we're going to override our div with the class logo with our high resolution background image. So let's save that and refresh our page. So at present, our picture has uh, changed to the high resolution image, but you'll notice that it's actually sort of, uh, because it's double the file size, we're only, we can only see a quarter of the image. So we need to condense the image size down so we can see it at its native resolution. To do this, inside our media query, we're going to include the CSS3 property, background size. And uh, I've put some details on the supporting blog post as to what different types um, of commands you can use inside this property. But we know that the image uh, needs to be 400 pixels wide to match the div. The resolution of the, uh, sorry, the size of the high resolution one is 800. So we just need to specify the 400 pixels that we wish for this image to be displayed at. Now the first size that you specify is the width. If you don't specify the height, it will just automatically proportionately scale it 
based on the uh, the width that you specify. Okay, so now if we refresh our page, we see that we get our high resolution image slotted in just like so. And just in case you couldn't quite see the change in the uh, resolution, I'm just going to switch that back, zoom in a little, and comment it again. And uh, hopefully, even though this video is going to be compressed many times over, hopefully when I refresh the page now, you'll see the Retina uh, Media Crew kicking in and replacing our image just then. Okay, so that's the CSS media query code you need for detecting retina displays. It's definitely worth going to the effort, even if for just a few key items within your design like sprites or your website's main logo. We also think it's a fair assumption that devices sporting a retina display will more than likely use a browser that supports CSS3 and therefore media queries and the background size property. Producing two different resolution images in the place of one will take a little extra time, but the results do look fantastic. If you're lucky enough to be browsing on a retina screen right now, check out these examples online and see how web design is evolving. So just some of the websites around the web that have started embedding images for retina devices is smashingmagazine.com. Take a look at their logo in the top left hand corner. They haven't actually used any fancy techniques uh, like the media query or retina.js to achieve this uh, retina logo. They've just simply embedded it at the uh, larger file size for all users. There are elements around on the, on the rest of the website that aren't uh, retina compatible yet, like these uh, icons in the top right hand corner, the little bookmark guy, but uh, they've started to uh, embrace uh, retina displays by making sure that at least their logo is compatible. One of my favorite examples of retina web design is campaignmonitor.com. Literally their entire homepage it's completely retina compatible with their various uh, typefaces uh, but in particular if you scroll down the uh, screenshots of campaign monitor in action are absolutely crystal clear on my display you can actually read text in these screenshots that you uh, would struggle to read on a regular resolution and even uh, to the extent of down here if you look at their social media icons sorry their client icons they're also uh, compatible on retina display so uh, if you have a retina device definitely recommend checking out uh, the campaign monitor website is a great example. Thanks for watching this week's web design video blog. Don't forget you can copy and paste all the code from the supporting blog post.